in this nitty gritty basics let's play live stream we're going to be playing american mahjong at i love maj i love maj has some really great fundamental exercises that can benefit beginners and intermediate players even some advanced players enjoy the tools in their exercise room if you have not tried playing it i love maj yet when you register in the promo section, enter Maj Life, and you'll get a three-week trial instead of a two-week trial. So you get an extra week of goodness. In this session, we're going to be talking about Char the Charleston, making good decisions. And I have some simplification tips for you. Before we get started, I just want to give a shout out to our new channel members, Ellen and Sharon, woohoo! Thank you for joining as a channel member. I hope you enjoy using the live chat. If you're just a viewer, thank you for watching my videos as always. If you want to participate in chat, please consider becoming a channel member. Uh, also, I want to give a shout out to our moderators. Thank you so much for helping monitor chat. And the last bit that I want to share is I still have a cough, so every now and again, I may have to mute, so please bear with me uh, because my um, <clears throat> throat is still not quite right. <laughs> so with that, we're going to go ahead and get into the topic, how to simplify decision making during the Charleston. I'm going to share my screen and we have a, a quick presentation. Uh, let me get it right here first. I always have to swap my screen. All right, here we go. Hold on one second. All right, let me just make sure we're good to go. Looks like the presentation is up. Let's dig into it. The first thing that I wanna share is that the purpose of the Charleston is to expedite hand development. Every player has the potential to quickly improve their dealt tiles because you're going to get up to 21 tiles during the Charleston that can expedite that process. So the purpose is to improve hand development, improve the dealt hand. And there are some strategies during the Charleston that you can use to simplify the process. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Before we get to the tips, I just want to put a frame around it. There are four stages in hand development. Target, gather, build, defend. Target, gather, build, defend. Those are the stages of hand development. When you first get your dealt hand, you're going to analyze the situation. Then you're going to probably first target the strength of the hand, and then you're going to identify alternatives. So decide what options you have for the strength of your hand, whatever that may be. And we're going to talk about that in detail. After you identify the alternatives, you're going to consider the choices and then you're going to make a decision. So I'm going to share some three specifically techniques that you can use to simplify decision making during the Charleston through the four stages, which is always present, target, gather, build, defend, target the strength of the hand gather tiles that support the strength of the hand, then you're going to build your multiples because American Mahjong is a game of multiples. And then along the way, you're going to defend, target, gather, build, defend. Those are the four stages of hand development. And incidentally, I'm writing a book on this topic. So you can look forward to that in 2025. My book for next year is on strategies overall. So let's get into these techniques. Techniques to simplify decision making. The first one is optimize. 
when you get your dealt hand, you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes you get multiples. Sometimes you have all singles. Sometimes you get flowers. Sometimes you have jokers and different variations of all those things. But the goal is going to be to optimize your potential to improve your hand and make it as effective as possible and flexible. You want to try to stay flexible. To optimize, you're going to target multiples. So in this dealt hand, you can see that we have three multiples. American Mahjong is a game of multiples. And if you target them, you're going to set yourself up for success because in the end, you're going to need them anyway. Why not start there? So with these multiples, you might think, well, I could play little odds. And you certainly can do that. There's even a three crack. Uh, let's see, a three crack there. But there's, there's also more. Before we move on, I just want to share that the idea here is to look for multiples first. Sometimes they're going to be pairs, pums, kongs. Regardless, target them and gather tiles to support them. And that is how you optimize. Use as many tiles as you can, of course, which is another one of the techniques that we're going to get into. And that's maximize. So when you maximize, you would use most of your tiles. If you don't have multiples, like in this case, you look for the predominant pattern. And we have a lot of three, six, nine here. So three, six, nine would be the category to focus on because you can use most of your tiles. That is the maximize technique, using most of your tiles for whatever category is on the card. In this example, we have three, six, nine, but if you have mostly evens, maximize and play evens. If you have mostly odds, maximize and play odds. If you have mostly consecutive run, maximize and play that category, and the list goes on. When a multiple forms, and more times than not, you will build a multiple during the Charleston, reassess completely, and then target, retarget, target the multiple, and then look at the rest of your tiles and focus on a category that uses most of your tiles. That way you're going to leverage the multiples with most of your tiles. So you reassess if you build a new multiple. I want to quickly talk about attributes to help with decision making as far as both what to target in your hand and also what to pass or what not to pass. The first thing is that American Mahjong is a game of multiples. 84% of the hands on the card this year use big multiples. And those would be Pungs, Kongs, and Quints. Pairs are in 61% of the hands. It's not just that one category on the card that's titled singles and pairs. There are singles and pairs in other hands. 61% of them, together that's 91%. And this is why I say American Mahjong is a game of multiples. So with your dealt hand, if you have a multiple, target that. Let that be the first step. Focus on the multiple, target the multiple, gather tiles to support it, and play a category that uses most of your tiles. Another consideration about looking for the strength of the hand is the difference between one suit and mixed suits. One suit hands are in 27% of the hands on the card. Mixed suits are in 69%. So there are many more. Sorry, hold on one second. <clears throat> There are many more options in mixed suits than there are in one suit. So while you're gathering tiles, you want to hold any tile that can be used in your chosen category, regardless of suit. When you run out of discards, decide if you're going to play a one suit hand or a mixed suit hand. 
and that will help free up more discards. If you decide to go mix suit, well, then you'll have some of the offsuit or maybe the, the tiles on the fray that you might not need. You can pass those along. So consider one suit and mix suit, but there are more hands in mix suits. Also, like numbers, this is more about passing tiles. When you look at your remaining tiles, after you have gathered as many tiles as possible to support the strength of your hand, you want to look at the remaining tiles. Try not to pass like numbers. In my opinion, passing like numbers is almost as risky as passing a pair. And that's because 40% of the hands on the card use like numbers. Try not to pass them. Sometimes you need to, and that's okay, but just make it a, a rarity. That kind of follows along with flowers as well. 44% of the hands on the card use flowers. So try not to pass flowers. The next thing that we're going to talk about is the, uh, let's see, optimize. We've already talked about that. So I have a slide out of order. Sorry about that. Uh, three, four, one, or three, five, one are the multiples. But, oh, I see. We want to talk about here just re confirming that building around multiples is ideal. But if you look at these tiles, you could also do consecutive run. Let's see here, like here, sorry about going back and forth. I'm just trying to compare the next slide. But you could also do two, three, four, five, or three, four, five, six, and let the ones go. That also could be ma um, maximizing, which is the next technique. So optimize by leveraging multiples and then maximize by using most of your tiles. So you can see here in that 369 example, we have more tiles than we do if we played consecutive run. There is some consecutive run here if you use the flower and the white dragon with four, five, six, or three, four, five, six even would be good because the multiple is with the six. Perhaps you could play maybe that concealed hand, for example. But if you look at these tiles, we have more 369 using the multiple and maybe even the red or the white dragon. This year, not so much because the dragons in 369 are opposite. But there are some dragon hands that could potentially be used. So you want to hold all the tiles that could possibly be used in your category of choice. So here, maximizing would be to play 369. The last technique is streamlining. Consider playing consecutive run and streamline because it's the most flexible category on the card and it has the most options, not just in that category, but outside the category. And I believe we have a slide for that. So here's a dealt hand that shows you no multiples. So you look for the predominant pattern. And in here, I'd say the predominant pattern is consecutive run, three, four, five, six. If we get a two, you could even maybe use the one. So in this case, I would discard the nines, the seven, eight, and the east. Maybe even keep the east because there is a wind hand that uses a run. So maybe discard seven, eight dot with one of the nines. And that way you would be streamlining and maximizing because most of these tiles are consecutive. With the categories, I just briefly want to share about these statistics because that might help you, especially if you're in between categories. Sometimes that happens. And this is a way to simplify the decision. So the first category with the most hands is odds, 20%, followed by consecutive run. If you compare odds to consecutive run, it almost looks like they have about the same number of hands, but there are more in 
the odds category then in consecutive run. Let's just see, do I have, no, okay. So in consecutive run, there are only 11 hands, but there are consecutive hands outside the category. So there are actually maybe just slightly one or two less hands that are have consecutive runs than odds. But because of the flexibility with consecutive run, you can go up or down a range of numbers and there are nine numbers in each suit. So you have far more tiles to use than you do with uh, odds. With odds, you have only five numbers. With evens, you have seven hands. With three, six, nine, you have eight hands, so a little bit more, and then fewer hands in the other categories. So most of the hands are going to be in odds, consecutive run, three, six, nine, and evens. Those are the categories that use number tiles, which is where you have the most flexibility because there are nine numbers and three suits. So consider that if you're between categories and consecutive run is one of those categories, play consecutive run because you have far more choices. So for example, if you have lots of three, six, nine and no multiples and you happen to get filler tiles, you might be able to switch to consecutive run. And it's even easier to do that between evens and odds because there's only one number in between. Whereas with three, six, nine, you have two numbers in between. So just consider that consecutive run is the most flexible category on the card. And you can streamline by choosing that category for the most options. So here's the power play. Stack the techniques. If you can optimize by targeting multiples, maximize by gathering most of your tiles that support the multiple and play a category using most of your tiles, you're going to have a power play there. There's power in that. And if you can play consecutive run that uses the strength of the hand with most of your tiles, well, then you're probably going to be a, uh, you're going to optimize your potential to be a front runner because you optimize, maximize, and streamline. So I hope that you try these strategies out. And if you have any questions, of course, you can let me know. Does anyone have any questions about the three techniques? Optimize, maximize, and streamline. Write it in the comment section or in the chat. And we can revisit them if you need to. So just put your questions in caps. And that way we can see them clearly. Optimize, maximize, and streamline. No questions? I want to wait for a minute because we do have a bit of a lag. Okay, so if there's no questions, we can always circle back. And I'm going to do some demonstration on this as well. Here's a litmus test where you can, while you're practicing these techniques, look at the results after the Charleston. And, okay, so look at the results after the Charleston. If you have more than four discards, I would say you're an underdog for that particular hand. And you're going to have to draw really well. Uh, to further develop your hand. It just means that you need to develop your hand further. If you have four discards, you're a contender for that game. You're still going to need to draw well. There's always a bit of luck through drawing the right tiles at the right time. That's where the luck is. But the decision making with how to use the tiles that you get with what you see on the table with discards and exposures, that's where the skill is. If you have less than four discards after the Charleston, I would say you're a front runner. You're still going to have to draw well and be mindful of discards and exposures to make sure that you can complete your hand.
But if you have less than four discards, I'd say you probably are going to be a front runner at the table for that particular hand. All right, any questions? If not, we're going to play at I Love Maj. I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen since I don't see any questions. And we'll open I Love Maj. Because we all love Maj. So we're going to play at I Love Maj. Uh, let's see here. Okay, let me share my screen. So we're going to get an hour and a half of gameplay in, which is awesome. Okay, let me widen this so you can see what we're looking at here. When you get to I Love Maj, if you log in, of course, you want to create an account, and then you would be logged in, click play, and then go to the game launch pad. And from here, you can choose to play with bots, which are three levels of intelligence. And then you could also play with friends or play online with random players. You can also play at a personal table. Uh, and they have lots of videos on how to do all that. So look in their, let's see, their videos and how to's, and you'll figure out how to use these options. Okay, so this is what we're going to focus on. Hold on one second. Okay, so the exercise room. We're going to do some demonstration of the techniques to simplify decision making. And we're going to look at the results. Uh, let's see here what happened. Okay, here we go. For some reason, my iPad stumbled a bit. Okay, uh, so we're going to do some demonstrations of those techniques. So hopefully it'll all come together and make sense for you. Uh, and what you want to do is go to Charleston practice. There are other exercises that you can do. Uh, one is make a hand where you make every hand on the card. That's an excellent exercise if you're new to the game. And then also, what hand is that where they show you the tiles and you tell the game which hand it is. So those are also excellent exercises, but we're going to focus on Charleston practice. And here is the game. We're going to do the 2023 card. Start the exercise. Okay. Can you guys see these tiles okay? Or should I go full screen? Hold on one second. All right, everybody with me? Okay, now here, we happen to have multiples, so we're going to target the multiples. We're going to optimize. Targeting is optimizing. So there's our multiples, four and six. Four, six. So you look at the four, six, two multiples. That's where we start. It just totally simplifies the decision making because you target the multiples. Like in this case, we have multiples. So that's where you start. Then you look at the rest of your tiles and you ask yourself, what category can I play that will use most of my tiles? That would be maximizing. So with four, six, we maybe could play two, four, six, eight, but we have a gap. There's no eight. Therefore, I would hold consecutive tiles just in case this moves to consecutive. And typically, <clears throat> When you're playing consecutive run, especially in mixed suits, you want to gather tiles four or five numbers in a range around the multiple. So in this case, we might even keep that seven because we could play two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, or four, five, six, seven. 
And that, of course, is going to be if we get fives. So we still need a fives. Five. So we have a gap with no eight for two, four, six, eight. And we have a gap with no five for consecutive run. But we do have two, three, four, or six, seven, no gaps with those little runs. So this would be optimize and maximize for the two strategies. And we may even streamline. We may have a power play here. So let's just see what happens because we need to pass tiles. We're going to pass the West and a nine. Now here we have another nine, but I would not do that. I would pass the one and break up the suits if you can. So this would be a great pass. We're not passing like numbers. Try not to pass like numbers. We've got a one and a nine. Bam. Here's look at the nine bam here. We have a pair, a new multiple. Anytime you get a new multiple, reassess. So we're going to just quickly reassess because we could potentially play now three, six, nine, because we have a pair of nines. So if we play three, six, nine, and incidentally, we have no gaps. Uh, if we play, let's say, um, well, we have no gaps when it comes to the three, six, nines being represented. We, we do have one flower. So we actually do have a no gap hand. Uh, three bam, let's see, it would be three bam, six crack, nine bam. But we want to try to use that six dot. So six, nine, if we get an eight, we could do six, seven, eight, nine. And that would maximize and also optimize and streamline because it's consecutive. We have two discards, though. So we need to let something go. This is where you look at all your keepers. Right now, we have all keepers here because we're looking at a run for consecutive run, but potentially two, four, six, eight, potentially consecutive run, and potentially three, six, nine. When I shared in that presentation, if you're in between, Go with consecutive run. It is far more flexible and you have way more options. So we're going to focus on consecutive run for now. And I want to look for isolated tiles. We need to find one isolated tile to pass. And I would say it would be the two crack. The two crack, I think, would be the isolated tile in these options. Maybe the seven. We might be able to do the seven instead of the two, because if we happen to get another eight or a couple of eights, we might be able to use the two. It's our only two for the two, four, six, eight category. And we also have some potential for two, three, four. So maybe the seven would be better either or, because if you look at this pass, one bam, seven bam, it's a little bit risky because we have odds in one suit. If we passed, the two crack instead of the seven bam, then that's also a bit risky because it's consecutive, even though it's two different suits. So the idea with your passes is that you just want to mitigate the risk, make it as benign as possible to your opponent because you don't want to help them build their hand. I think if this were me, I probably would pass the seven. So let's pass one, seven, north. All right, we have a seven and an eight. We have no gaps now for two force. Oh, here's a two. Okay, so now we have no discards, but we have three categories that we could potentially play. We could play two, four, six, eight, because we have all tiles represented for that category. Twos, we have two twos, we have a six, we have an eight and a pair of fours. Oh, a pair of sixes right there. So we could potentially play two, four, six, eight. Let's just use the joker to separate the tiles and we'll do a comparison. So we're going to put the nine to the side, the three, and the seven. So two, four, six, eight would maximize. And it would also optimize because we're, we're targeting one of the multiples. So because of where the multiples are, I would not pick a hand. We need to gather more. You don't have to pick a hand.
till you run out of discards. And clearly we have discards. So try not to focus on, well, what hand am I going to play? It really doesn't matter. Not yet. You just gather until it's clear the direction to go. So two, four, six, eight has potential, but the, let's look at three, six, nine now. So if we played two, four, six, eight, I'd say we have four discards and a pair. Let's say instead we look at three, six, nine. So we're going to hold three, six, nine instead. That would mean that we'd have to let go of a pair of fours. And of course, we're going to let the eight go and the two. We have way more discards. So two, four, six, eight is going to be better for us than three, six, nine, even though we're using two of our multiples. If you can use more than one multiple, like here we have three multiples that don't go together necessarily. We're either going to use the four or the nine, but we won't be able to use both. Sometimes that happens and you want to go with the choice that uses more multiples. The more, the better. So if we played three, six, nine, we would have six tiles if we did a mixed suit hand with a flower, let's say. But we could also maybe consider consecutive run. So let's look at three, four, five, or let's look at first six, seven, eight, nine. Six, seven, eight, nine. It's one better than three, six, nine. So I probably table three, six, nine, or I'd take it off the table. Take that away as an option. I think either consecutive run six, seven, eight, nine, or two, four, six, eight are going to be the way to go. We have to make a choice though because we need to pass. So if by looking at these tiles, we have a pair of sixes and a pair of nines, six, seven, eight in cracks, pair six, pair nine. So really they don't go together quite yet. They're not quite gelling. So I think what I would do here is probably focus on three, four, five, six, and focus around the four and the six. Since I'm keeping the four and the six, I'm going to keep the twos. So let's just see if we can let go of some big numbers, like let's say the seven, one of the nines, and now we need one more tile to pass. And this is where you look for the isolated tile. And that would be the two dot. So that would be my pass. We're going to focus on either three, four, five, six. We have a gap, no five, but that's okay. Because we could also play maybe two, four, six, eight. So two dot, seven crack, nine band. That's what we're going to pass. Let's see what happens. And now this nine band is a discard. So we're one tile ahead for the next pass. We're looking at two, four, six, eight at the moment. Maybe two, three, four, five, or three, four, five, six, if we get a five. No five, but we did get a three. Okay, so there's three, four consecutive multiples. So I would focus on consecutive run, and I would let the evens go, which would give us a tile to pass. If you gather four or five numbers in a range and mix suits around your multiples, the range around your multiple, we would be focused on either two, three, four, five, or three, four, five, six. We have three tiles to pass without even looking at a hand. We still don't need to even look at a hand because we've got discards. So we have south, eight, nine. Those will be great for passing. So we're gonna keep going. We're looking at three, four, five, six. Here's another three. So we're going to keep it. It does appear that three, six, nine is kind of coming and going. And just keep that in mind as you go. Because sometimes the tiles that go around in the Charleston come back. And we may be able to switch to a three, six, nine hand. But we need tiles to pass. And I would want to maximize my potential for consecutive run. So I would let the nine go we have a far better chance with consecutive run three, four, five, six, I think. 
actually here's a hand with no gaps one two in cracks three four in bands we would have to throw away the six dot maybe we keep the one and look for the isolated tiles which in this case might be this three dot so we can do west three dot nine keep the one two because we could do one two three four the six crack is isolated too uh, because we won't be able to do three, four, five, six, six. That's not how it works. If anything, we could use a five bam to use both sixes for that second hand from the bottom, but we have no five and that's a pair gap. Anytime you have a gap, lower that as an option. Just don't even think about it, especially if it's a pair gap or even any gap really. So let's pass nine three west now we have a seven so there's a six seven oh we got the one another multiple built here one two here's one two three four no gaps one two three four we have five discards and a pair we don't need we still have to pass though but we have a hand here with no gaps that uses three multiples that's what I would do. And we really don't even have to pick a hand yet. We can maybe even keep the six dot and pass these tiles here. Six, seven, excuse me, six, seven, nine, one of each suit. That's a fine pass. We have a red dragon, eight crack, one bam. These are not helpful at all to us. We have one, two, three, four, no gaps, second hand down on the right. We have a pair we don't need at the moment, the six dot, although we might be able to use it if we get a five. So I would say we should ask for three tiles. So let's see what we get here. Nines, not a shocker there. So we have three discards with a pair we don't need. And that goes into another strategy. This particular strategy is called Joker Bait and it's a bit advanced. When we play with robots, hopefully I'll have an ex a, a hand where we can demonstrate this strategy. In a nutshell, you hold a pair you don't need and in the middle of the game, you discard one, someone makes an exposure with a Joker and on your next turn, you use the second tile to get the Joker. That is called Joker Beat. Big shout out to Tom Sloper of Sloperama. He's the one who came up with that strategy. It is hit or miss though. So don't be disappointed if it doesn't work. And you really have to watch the tiles going out because if somebody has a, let's say, if somebody discards two six dots or even one and nobody wants it, well, then you know it's not going to work. So just keep that in mind. But we, I would say in this case, we would probably, actually we do have an extra discard with this flower. We have four discards with Joker bait. I'd say we're gonna be an underdog because we have f more than four discards. But we do have a hand with no gaps. Second hand down on the right. Now, if you want, you can click see hands and they're telling us that there's one potential hand. Let's see which one. Consecutive run line two. That's what we picked. So you can kind of test yourself against the, the algorithm in the game. And in this case, consecutive run number two would be the ideal hand right now. But it could change if, if we get a five. Like if we get a five dot, I, pr I might consider switching to three, four, five, six. Either way, we have five or four discards. Okay, so I want to do something. Uh, actually, next week, I think it is. No, no, no. It's a couple weeks away. There's a recurring schedule on the topics that we cover. I think next week is on overwhelm, uh, on overwhelm minimizing overwhelm. So I'm just going to table that. Forget that I said that. All right, we're going to do this again with a new set of tiles. We'll do it one more time and then we'll play with robots. Does anybody have any questions about 
optimize, maximize, streamline. In this case, we did all three. Okay, let's see what we can do this time. We have east and west, two pair, multiples. So that's where we start, east and west. We're going to gather wins, but we could also maybe play something consecutive. And there are, oh, we have three sevens in here, but we have east and west. You can't use like numbers with east and west. And I'm thinking specifically of the second hand down on the right. We do have some potential for a year hand, but we have no flowers. That would be a pair gap. So forget it. We're not going to do a year hand. We're going to focus on consecutive tiles. The consecutive tiles we have are either one, two, or seven, eight to go with east and west, which would be pungs. Second hand down on the right. So we're going to target the multiples, which would be optimizing. And we're going to maximize because we happen to have consecutive run with wins. And we're even streamlining because we're using consecutive tiles. So we're doing a power play again. And we have three tiles to pass. Let's do seven dot. Can't do a two with a seven except for one hand. And that would be that pair hand. Second from the bottom. Let's risk it. How's everybody doing? Any questions? I just want to touch base in here. Everybody doing all right? Okay, no questions, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, good, okay. All right, very good. Okay, now here we have six, seven. So there's some consecutive there as well, but we can't keep it all. We can't keep all these tiles. We need tiles to pass. Okay, thank you, Evelyn. So we have a three and a six. So let's pass those. We need one tile. None are isolated. So we just need to do the best that we can. So here's another tip for you. If you're trying to figure out what tile to pass, you need one tile, like in this case, and you don't have any isolated tiles, like we have a one, two, which are together. We have a seven, eight together and a six, seven together. Look for consecutive tiles in this case, where you have room on both sides. So you can go up or down. And that would be seven, eight or six, seven. And that will free up the one, two because the one, two are edge tiles. The only tile that we can use in this case would be a three. But with the seven, eight, you can use a six or a nine. And with the six, seven, you can use a five or an eight. So one, two will go. So that's another way to simplify the decision making on which one to send. Think about the flexibility in your run. Try to go with what can give you that flexibility of going up or down. You want to be able to stagger or not stagger. You want to be able to move up or down the range. You want that flexibility. So let's pass the one. If we did the two, it would be a little more risky because it's consecutive. Okay, we have a wind which is in that category, gather every tile you can use in that category. Even though we weren't thinking about the South, we're focused on East and West. If a tile can be used in the category, keep it until you get to a place where you have to make a decision. We also have a six. So we now have our run, six, seven, eight. We're gonna now let go of the cracks. So we have three tiles to pass. We can stop the analysis. And pass. This is a little bit risky with the six, seven, but I would risk it. You focus on your hand first and you do the best you can with what's left over. We could maybe make it better by passing the south. So maybe let's keep the south and pass or keep. Pass the south and keep the six. Or maybe we could even make it a little better and do uh, south, 
two six, and that way we're left with a two crack and a seven crack. Otherwise, if we get all keepers and we don't pass that six, we'd be left with a two six, which would be useful for two, four, six, eight. So you want to think about what you can get rid of to build your hand, but also what you're sending to your opponent. That's why this game is complex. And the Charleston is one of the big differentiators in American Mahjong. It, it is a complex game, which is why we always come back for more, right? At least that's what goes on in my head. I want more because it's, it's challenging. Okay, let's go. Let's pass. Now we have a north. <laughs> I almost wish we could keep that south, but that's okay. We also have a dragon, six, seven, eight dragon. It sure looks pretty, but we have multiples that we're building around. We can't use six, seven, eight dragon with an east and a west. So I would just let that go. Let's continue. So let's pass two, nine, green. You're not gonna use a two and a nine. So even though that looks risky, it's really not. Same suit, but they're really far apart. We got a keeper, seven, bam. That's one of the pair tiles. And we have tiles we can pass. So we still don't have to let the north go. We could keep it. Maybe we'll get the south back. And we could switch to maybe the concealed hand if we get the right number. All right, let's pass. We have tiles to pass right here. Seven, four, nine. That's just fine. Oh, look what we got. An east and a south. We have a four band. We have one discard, but we've got options in here. We could play east and west with six, seven, eight, or we could play all news, which would be the first hand. And I probably would play the one with the east, west being Kongs. But because we have a, the jokers and we can pung that west and Kong the eight, that would mean that we all we need in here is a six bam for the pair. I would say we would be probably a front runner for this. And I would, I would risk passing two wins. Normally I don't, but we have all keepers, no gaps, and, and one of the pair tiles that we need. Seven, eight, or six, seven, we need those paired up. I would risk passing two wins here. All right, now we have an option. We could do seven, eight, nine instead of six, seven, eight. So, oh, and we get to do the optional cross. Let's do two tiles because we, if we get a nine bam, we'll be better off. I don't remember six bams being through the Charleston. I don't even remember if we had nine bams going around, but let's just do two because having an option is good. Two tiles. We got another seven. That's really not helpful though, because we need pairs, six, seven, eight, or seven, eight, nine. So really the result here is that we have two discards, no gaps for hand two under Winds and Dragons. I'd say we'd be a front runner for this one. We optimize, maximize, and streamlined. Any questions on these techniques? What do you think? Give me some feedback here. Any thoughts about these techniques? We're going to play with robots next. If you're ready, say go in the chat. I'm going to wait, though, because we have a lag. Why is there such a lag? Okay. Uh, the recommended hands. Okay, go, go, go. Okay. C hands, wins and dragons number two. Let's see. For some reason. Oh, there we go. You know that option of recommended hands would be to work out what you think and see what the game thinks. Yeah. And in this case, it pegged the same one. Okay, so we're going to close and we're gonna we're gonna exit, and then we're going to play with 
we're going to play with bots now. And we're going to play with intermediate. Uh, no, let's play with, let's see, since, since this is basics, let's play one game with the entry-level bot. So they're going to play like beginners. And I'm going to demonstrate the techniques, optimize, maximize, streamline. And then the next game will upgrade to intermediate. It's a nice option. All right, so I'm going to launch the game. All right. Do you guys want me to go full screen? Okay, we're going to start the game. Now, I think we're going to be on a timer, so we need to speed it up a little bit. We have a flower, okay, uh, northeast singles, four bam, five, seven, nine in cracks, three, four, five, six, seven in dots, pair six. So we're going to target the six. That's what we're going to start with. That is the first thing that you should see. And that's where you start. With the remaining tiles, we could do three, four, five, six. We could do four, five, six, seven. And therefore, I would keep the five, the four, and the seven. We have three tiles to pass. Because we have so far to go, I would not pass two wins. It's too risky right now. Instead, I would let go of an isolated tile, probably the four bam. It's isolated. Do you see that? Look for isolated tiles to help simplify your decision. Okay. Oh, and then we get a four bam. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all right. We're going to let it go to somebody else. Four bam, green dragon, and a wind. That's a great pass. A little bit risky with a green with a matching dragon, but matching dragon with the bam, but that's okay. All right, let's pass. We have a six. That's a keeper. It's in our range. Three, four, five, six, or four, five, six, seven. Okay, so let's pass east one, two. A little bit risky, but that's okay. We need to keep most of our tiles for our hand and do the best we can with what's left over. Right now, we have only three discards. So that's the best we can do. All right, now here's a seven. We have two discards. And we can stop the Charleston, but I would not stop the Charleston because we don't even know what hand we're playing yet. I would keep going and identify two tiles to pass because I would not pass two wins. I would pass one. So we need to find two tiles to pass for the second left. So I would definitely keep going. And I would pass a west because I believe we gave them a north already. And we would have to then look for isolated tiles or tiles that are not useful for our predominant pattern around our multiple. We have three, four, five, six, or four, five, six, seven in one suit. And I would focus on one suit in this case. So I would probably let the five go since it's isolated from the seven. If we had a six crack, I probably would reconsider. But because the five is separate from the seven, it's isolated, I would pass it. Then we have a six, seven in bands. I would pick one of those. Either that or maybe let the three go because we could potentially play six, seven, six, seven, six hand down under consecutive run with no gaps. And we could still maybe play four, five, six, seven. So we still have options by letting go of one tile. So that's probably what I would do. We have a hand in here. We have two hands in here with no gaps right now. Actually, we have three hands with no gaps. We could potentially play the second hand down in one suit. We could play the fourth hand down, excuse me, Fourth hand down, four, five, six in dots. Uh, let's see. No, 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 not the fourth hand down. Sorry. The uh, Pung Kong, Pung Kong, 
the six hand down, six, seven, six, seven, or the flower hand, second hand from the bottom. The pair pair would be five, six with sevens. So let's see what happens. We got a flower. So whatever we do, I would use the flowers. So that takes the second hand out. That points to the third hand. Uh, we have no white dragon. That's a gap. So I would take that off the table for now, or I would remove that as an option. So I would say the fifth hand, five, four, five, six, or five, six, seven in one suit, or we could maybe do the second hand from the bottom. And we have tiles to pass. Oh, look, we have an option, seven, uh, eight dot. So probably what I would do is pass the seven crack. Let's see, maybe keep the seven, because we could still maybe play that uh, five, six, seven, seven. Let's let the four go. So now we have five through eight. Oh no, we don't want to pass like numbers. No, that's very risky. I think it's almost as risky as passing a pair. We're gonna let the eight go. So that's another way to simplify your decision-making. Try not to pass like numbers and find another option. We got a seven bang, a seven crack. So now I would focus on probably, let's see, we have a green dragon, a south. And since we have a pair of flowers, let's let the six bam go. It's shaping up for that second hand from the bottom. Cause now we have that seven crack paired up. Oh, we ended up with a six bam in here, but that's okay. Don't play the shoulda, coulda, woulda. Don't spin your wheels in that space. We have two different hand, two hands really that we can play and we have three discards. So I would let these go. I would ask for three. Pass those. Okay, let's let's see what happens. Oh, we got a seven dot in there. Look at all the sevens. And then we have a south and a green. All right. So if I were to pick a hand, I would probably play five, six, seven, seven. We have three discards with Joker bait. Remember I was telling you about Joker bait? Let's see if we can demonstrate how that works. Because we really, if we leverage the seven crack, we can let the seven dot go. And we'll hold on to it until the middle of the middle game and test out this Joker bait theory. It's a strategy theory. It does, it's hit or miss, but it's been proven. So it's really not a theory. It's a strategy. We could also maybe play five, six, seven, and let the seven cracks go. Either way, we have a pair we don't need. We have three clear discards, really. This four dot can go. Because we have a pair of flowers. We want to use that. You might think, well, what about playing the second hand down, four, five, six, seven? You'd have to throw away a pair of flowers. I'd rather use the flowers. I'd rather leverage those flowers. Either way, we have two discards before we have to let the four go. So technically, we don't have to discard that yet. And incidentally, you can use your tiles to kind of separate your plan A from plan B. Like plan B are the tiles to the left of the flower. Discards are the tiles to the right of the joker. I do that a lot. And it helps me make sure that I don't forget my plan B. And also I don't discard a tile I need. So I use some kind of a marker and I just pick one of my tiles to be the marker. Usually a flower is a good marker. A joker or a dragon is a good marker. So Hopefully that option is helpful for you. Okay, so let's discard the south. Okay, so we're gonna, we're not taking that. We're gonna close that little dialogue. We don't need a six bam. We need a pair of fives in here. That's the risk at the moment. We need to pair that up because we need pair, pair, five, six. And then we need to pung the sevens. And those we can actually do right now. We still need a flower in here. We got to have four flowers. 
So let's go. Another 6 p.m. We don't need a north. This is Dottie just hurting here. <gasps> seven dot. Okay, now we have a pung. We have a pung of sevens. I would reassess completely because you know what we could do? We Let's take this four dot. We're going to discard that. But we could now maybe play like numbers with sevens or five, six, seven and leverage the pung. So if your joker bait builds, reconsider because that's a heavier multiple. It's a bigger multiple, which is more powerful than the pair because American Mahjong is a game of multiples. So we're reassessing completely because of that seven dot now. And I would keep the sevens because we could potentially use the sixes now as joker bait, hold the five for an option, and play like numbers with sevens and dragons. We need the other dragons in here, of course, but we have a discard, so we really don't have to pick a hand until we run out of the discards. Okay, now we need to keep an eye on dragons, and we need five, six dot, maybe, as the option, plan B. I would say probably like numbers with sevens might might be better because that would be maximizing. We would not be streamlining anymore though because we're working with like numbers. So we would be optimizing and maximizing, which is fine. It's still a power play because we're stacking the techniques. And incidentally, I would say we're probably a contender for this one because I think we had, did we have two discards with Joker Bait? or maybe three with joker bait, I would say we're a contender. Joker, I mean, not joker, dragon, green dragon. We really don't need that. For the like number hand, we need one dragon. And because our multiples are the sevens with that green dragon like that, I, I would not consider, for example, switching to, we, we have some potential to switch to the odd category and this would be for one two three four the fifth hand down on the right five dot seven dot pair pung seven crack pung with a pair of nine cracks and then a kong of green dragons but we don't have a nine crack and that's a pair gap remember when i shared about gaps if you have a gap especially a pair gap take that option out so we're going to ignore that green dragon. It's pretty and dragons are nice, but it doesn't quite work because we don't have a nine crack. And that would really be the only way to use a pair of dragons to upgrade it to a calm for that hand. So let's discard this. Okay, now flower. We could calm if we commit to that second hand from the bottom and use a joker. But I guarantee <clears throat> that joker is going to get swapped out. With flowers, I try not to call them with a joker because you're going to lose it, especially if you're still developing your hand. We're still building. We are not filling any gaps, which is good, but we're building. We have, well, actually, we do have gaps. We don't have our single dragons. If we could get one more dragon in here, the red or the white, then I might commit if another flower goes down. But since there are eight flowers, we really don't need to take that right now. Don't feel pressured to call just because you can. It's risky to do that. And in this case, we would be losing our only joker. And I guarantee it would go quick. We're going to ignore it. No, we don't need eight crack. There's another flower, but we're going to let it go. That's two, but there are six more. Well, four more because we have two in our hand. Okay, now eight bam. That is consecutive, but because our pair is with the six dot, we have five, uh, six, seven. We have no nine bam. We can't do, for example, six, seven, eight, nine. You might think, well, what about single pair pung, Kong Kong? We have no, we have no eight crack. 
that would be the fourth hand down, five dot, six dot, seven dot, single pair pung, and then Kongs of eight bam. It would be an eight bam with a nine crack again. We don't have it. And incidentally, I think a nine crack was going around in the Charleston and somebody kept it. So I would discard this eight. Try not to be distracted. If you get what looks like a keeper, just focus on the strength of your hand and let that help you make your decision. In this case, it's not helpful because we don't have a nine. Okay, we're going to let that go. There's the nine crack. That's coming from Quinton. Okay, dot, dotty, discard an eight, dot. We don't need that. Nine bam. Well, really, this nine bam is not very helpful without eights. It's isolated. Even though it looks kind of pretty, it, it's, it's not. Don't be deceived. It's an outlier. We've got options with two different hands. Okay, now there's the first dragon that we need out. We need to keep an eye on red dragons. Joker. Now we have to make a choice. We have all keepers. Plan A, probably like numbers with or without dragons. Plan B, five, six, seven. Five, six, seven in dots. You know what we could do is let the dragon go and give us a little more time because we don't have the red or the white. Nobody took the red dragon, but this might give us a little more time to develop the four flower like number hand or the five, six, seven. Either way, we have a pair we don't need. By throwing away this dragon, we're going to give ourselves a little more time to develop two options. So instead of three options, we're going to whittle it down to two, two hands. So let's let the dragon go. Since we have no red dragon and no white dragon, maybe somebody's keeping the dragons. Now we have to make a choice. So... What I would do here is pass. Because if we play the like a number hand with four flowers, we need a pair. We could con that with a joker. Actually, you know what? We are set. Because if we do that, we would be waiting on a pair. It is a little bit risky though. It makes me cringe a little bit because we need a pair in here for the like number hand, two cons of sevens with a pair of sevens. The other thing I was thinking is, well, maybe we let the seven crack be the pair and we can use the jokers for the seven bam. That would require us to draw a flower. And there's already two out. Since there are two flowers out, I think what I would do here is risk it and take the seven crack because we can use the joker with the flower. Let's see. I think I would do that. The other thing we could do is let it go and discard the sevens and play five, six, seven. We could con the seven dot, con the six dot, and then we would need one more tile for the five. That would not be as risky. Not only that, but let's see. Either way, we don't need a pair. Let's play five, six, seven and go with the one with no, no risk. There's no risk because we have a pair already with our flower. So let's go with the low risk and let it go. That's another way to simplify your decision-making. If you're between hands and you have one where there's a bit of a risk because maybe you don't have a pair and you just have a single tile, and then you have another option where you can use all jokers, go with that option 
because there's no resistance there. There's no risk because we can use any number of jokers for the five or the six. If the five dot goes down, we could Kong. If the six dot goes down, we could Kong. And then we just need to pick an, another joker or a five. But we can use any number of jokers since we have our pair of flowers. So we're going to ignore it. And we're going to go with the option with least resistance. We're going to pass. Okay, we do not need a West. Eight bam, don't need that. Now, nobody needed the seven crack, but we're still early in the game. Let's hold it and see if maybe we could get a joker out of it. Maybe somebody wasn't ready to call it. Let's let the eight bam go. Okay, that's a pass. There's the seven crack again. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, look, we got the flower. Okay, now, this is what I would do now. This game can change on a dime. We've got the flower now. We could con that. And we can use the seven crack as our pair. We have two jokers for the seven bam. So now we're back to discarding the five dot. And we can use the six dot for joker bait. Anytime you build a multiple, reassess. We're going to go back to like numbers. We have our pair, the seven crack. So let's discard the five. Yeah, we don't need that. Nope. Don't need an eight crack. Two bam. Yeah, that, that's not for us. Now, we need to keep an eye on how many tiles are left because we have a pair here. No six dots are out yet. So maybe, let's see here, maybe in two more picks, we'll let one go. Or we may be forced to if we have a, a discard that comes or we, we get a keeper. We're going to pass. Nope. Oh, yeah, we don't need that. No, we don't need a five. Don't need a nine dot. We're looking for, we're looking for seven bam, seven dot and a flower. We don't need wins. Okay, now we need to start thinking about discarding the six dot. Let's go one more, one more pick. You want to do it before 40 tiles remaining. We have 58 tiles remaining. Oh, there's the six dot. Let's see if someone takes it. Nobody wanted it, so it's a miss. It's not good joker bait. We got a keeper. Let's let the six dot go. All right. Now we're we're one away from ready. And we're in the middle of in the middle game still. So this was a, a great hand. We'll call. Kong. Now <laughs> they got the joker right away. So we're ready to win on a seven dot or a flower. Oh, there's a joker up for grabs uh, across from us. We're looking for a flower or a seven dot. Oh, there's the nine crack. Nope, don't need that. Don't need a two dot. Oh, two jokers up for grabs with Marjorie. One joker with Quentin. No exposures for Dottie. We need a flower or a seven dot. Uh-oh. Five crack. I think this was out. Yes. Right here. We'll ignore. We're looking for a flower or a seven dot. We need a keeper. Five crack. Okay, the two dot and the two crack are are, let's see, still up for grabs here. Only two flowers out. No. Five bam. That's already out. Where's our time? Eight dot was just thrown. Now, two flowers are out from two different players, so the chances of them discarding flowers is pretty good. Nope. We're good there. Red dragon. Don't need it. Looks like nobody wants dragons. 
We got the flower. All right. So we got Mahjong. Mahjong. Woohoo. So we contender. Because I think we had like three discards with Joker B or something like that. But we had three hands with no gaps, I believe. So that was a great game. What did you guys think about that game? We're going to play again. Let me cough real quick here. All right, next game. I hope that these techniques are helping you simplify your decision making. Just remember, optimize, maximize, and streamline, and then stack them for a power play. All right, <clears throat> let's see what we can do. We have a pung of fours and a pair of eights. So whatever we do, we're gonna use those, which means we are probably gonna play evens. We have a west and a south. We have a white dragon too, though. Okay, this is a challenge. We can't keep it all. Hold on. Okay. One thing I was thinking is if people aren't playing wins, typically they come to you in the first Charleston. We might be able to play three, four with wins news or maybe the white dragon with a four dot and let the big numbers go and let that eight bam go. The other thing I was thinking is, well, maybe we could use the seven, eight or eight, nine with wins. This would be the concealed hand under wins, but we'd have to throw away a pun of fours. Use your bigger multiple. So because we have no two, and we have no six. I would either break up the eight and pass it with the seven nine, like seven dot nine crack, and break up the eight. Or I would keep the eight and hope for two and six so we could play two, four, six, eight and let a wind go. Maybe we could even let that west go because it's only a single. You might think we could pick up a single later. So let's do that. Okay, we got a flower. I don't like to pass flowers. Here's north, south, and nines. Now we have to make a choice. Number tiles are far more flexible. So I'm thinking we give up on the wins. There are no mixed suit hands with flowers in evens. So I would probably think about maybe keeping the flower and playing three, four, or four, five with the dragon. But we have a gap. We don't have the other tiles in dots. I think what I would do here is break up the eight and go with the pun of fours. This was a really good example where we don't have supporting tiles, but we have a big multiple. Let's see what happens. We got a four. That would be a keeper. Here's a five. Now we have a hand with no gaps. Four or five dragon with flowers. And we have tiles we can pass. So I would say that was the right choice. It worked in our favor and we're focused on three, four, five. So we are optimized, maximized, and we're streamlined. This is the power play. We've got a six. Now we have four, five, six. Here's four, five, four, five, four, five. We have two discards. I would definitely continue. And I'd probably let the three crack go. It's not isolated, but we've got, we've got options with our four, five, six. We could do four, five, dragon, 
if we get, let's see, a seven dot, we could do four, five, six, seven dragon concealed under consecutive run, or we could do four, five, four, five, six hand down. I would let the three to, three crack go. Oh, we got the east and west. That's a risky pass. We, I would let something go. Probably the six because we could do east six nine, and we could play either four five four five or four five dragon with the flower. Four five dragon would maximize. But it's a bit risky because we need a pair of flowers. Four, five, four, five, no gaps, no risk. It's a hand of least resistance, meaning you can use as, as many jokers as you want. That would be the sixth hand down under consecutive run. Okay, we've got tiles we can pass. No keepers, yikes. Oh, here's an interesting tip. We could pass three, seven, nine. That's pretty risky. One suit, all odds. I would not do that. We could maybe keep the three and pass the west. So we have seven, nine west. If someone has an eight, they could play consecutive run. If I have an option, I would pass more of a three, six, nine pass than a consecutive because there are several numbers between three and nine versus seven and nine. So try to spread them apart, especially if they're in one suit. Okay, uh, we did not get any keepers here. So let's assess. We have two hands, no gaps for both, and four discards. I'd say we're a contender. But we, we're going to need to draw really well. So let's see what happens. That we don't need. So maybe we can. Actually, I would let the West go first. <clears throat> Pass. Oh, there's a multiple we don't need. Joker bait. Let's let the West go. Maybe we can get a joker out of the seven. Okay, now here, we're not ready for that five. We need to calm either way. Set a third hand down or the sixth hand down, either way. Don't need that. There's a joker up for grabs. Don't need that. We're good there. Four bam, that's a keeper. Okay, now we have a new multiple. So I would let the four, uh, the four or five dragon hand go and focus on four, five, four, five. So our, I would say we keep the seven ban for Joker B, four, five, four, five. I think I would keep the flower and the dragon for a little bit because if we get a four crack, we might be able to switch to like numbers with fours. And that we still have four discards, including Joker B. I would let the nine dot go because it's already out there. We'll ignore. We don't need win wins at all. Eight crack. Nope. We don't need eight crack. All right. Three oh, dot. Cool. Okay. Three dot across from us. Hopefully they're not playing consecutive run. Or may, let's hope they're playing three six nine because they may have our five dot if they're playing little odds one three five or consecutive run, three, four, five. We'll see. We're good there. Ooh, white dragon. Okay, I would reassess because we now have a multiple. I would go back to four, five, dragon. Oops. Four, five, dragon. We would need a joker for the five dot. It's already out. We still have a discard we don't need. So. <clears throat> We're good there. Six fan. Okay, now here's something. Always keep your eye on how things develop because now we have four, five, six, seven. And that would use two multiples 
we have two multiples with four or five. Because we have a pung of fours, I, I wouldn't stick with what we had. I would stick with four or five. We don't need, we need a pair. So you can't call for a pair. Six dot. All right, well, there's an option. Four, five, six. We would have to let go of the flower or the, the dragon. Let's see here. Six dot, it's out. Let's let it go. Now we have to make a choice. Either way, we're going to need, let's see here. Either way, we're going to need a joker for the five. We could do either four, five, four, five. We can't call for either five because we only have one joker. With the four, five dragon, we could Kong the four and Kong the dragon. Let's take it. That will expedite developing. Hopefully we'll be ready before our opponents. So let's hold the seven, bam. Maybe we'll get a joker out of that. That's joker bait. The five, bam, is a good first discard. We have two pair we don't need. I'm hoping we'll get a joker out of one of those. We don't need that. Nope. Here. Three, bam. We're locked in with this dragon. <clears throat> we can ignore, ignore. Oh, they got our they got our joker. Okay, East. We don't need wins. Looks like nobody's playing wins. Oh, we need a pair still. We need to keep an eye on the flowers. Four crack. We're locked in with our, our dragons, so let's let the four go. Okay, we don't need that. We're looking for a four dot, really. Three crack, we do not need that. Oh, that's our tile. Now we're gonna need two jokers and three dots are out. So we're, we're, we're back to being an underdog now. We need two jokers. Three crack, nope, we're locked in with our, our Kong. Sometimes that happens and that's okay. Green dragon. Nope. Whoa. Two jokers up for grabs. Nine bam. No. Let's let this go. Oh, I thought maybe somebody would want that. No. Let's see if someone takes that. We want someone to take that because we have a pair we don't need. Nobody wanted it. So we're going to escalate those as discards. Oh, dragon. Please. Thank you. Okay, now we need another one for our five dot. There's still one more five dot, I think. Let's see, one, two, one more five dot. We need it. North. We don't need that. We don't need that. Nobody wants the wins. We're going into the end game now. When you're we have 40 less than 40 tiles, you're in the end game and you want to start holding safe discards. There's all these wins out there. We Nobody's playing wins, so we're going to hold that for a safe discard. We need to discard these fours next. There are no four bams out. We might get a joker out of these. You want to try to disperse your joker bait. You want to chum the table with your joker bait before the end game, which is right now on our next pick. Oh, there it is. Nobody took it, so it's not good. It's another miss. So let's see, eight dot. Now we need to think defensively. No eight dots are out, and nobody wanted the four bam, so I would throw the eight dot instead. And there's oh, not on the eight dot. That's Mahjong seven, eight, nine with eight bam. So Marjorie won. And we've got three away from a win, which is good. Could be better. All right, let's play again. Hopefully we'll get a play at least two more hands. Okay. 
we have south green and white singles two four five six in bands pair five one crack one dot two dot three dot pair two so we have two and a five those are the multiples that's where we start we're going to target the multiples and i would say to use two and five we've got to have consecutive tiles and we have a hand here with no gaps actually when our two three four five but we might be able to do one, two, three, four, five if we get a four crack. We could do two, three, four, five, let's see, three. I don't think, I don't think we're gonna be able to use the six band. Either way, we don't need the south. With a two five, we need to work in the two dot five band. So I don't think we're gonna use wins because two five are too far apart. And the only Way to use mixed suits with wins is the concealed hand. So we're not going to keep wins. And we do have some potential for a dragon hand with bams, but we'd have to throw away a pair of twos. So I'd let that dragon go. And then I would also let a, the one go for now. We're not picking a hand, not till we run out of discards. Let's pass the south. We don't need wins. The six isolated. There's a one. One, two. One, two. One, two, three. We, we're not going to be able to use a one, two with a five. We might have to break up that five. Let's just see what happens. We have a one, two. That's stronger than, well, we could do two, three, four, five. Or one, two, three, dragon. Or one, two, dragon. We have no flowers, though. That's a gap. Another one. Now that's a pung. So I would think about that. We don't need the eight. Now we have to make some choices. I typically don't pass white dragons. We could do one, two, dragon, but we have no flowers. Let's see, I think I would, I would let the six go. It's a little bit risky. Best we can do though. Okay, we're gonna keep going. We've got discards. You know what I would do though? Maybe hold that one. If we get a two crack, I know it's a gap, but this one dot should be the, the driver. It's the biggest multiple we have. If we get a two crack, we could do one, two, one, two. So let's continue. So let's pass nine, eight. This is where I would probably break up the five. Sadness, with sadness. Okay, now we have a four crack. West can go. Here's a two bam, one, two. Let's let the four and the five go. There's a one. We have tiles to pass. A two crack would be awesome right now. Oh, look what we got. A flower. We could do one, two dragon. I'm trying to, sometimes it won't let you separate the tiles. I don't know why. There's one, two dragon. We can also do one, two, three. I would probably let the two bam go so we can pass fully. Here we go. Okay, no keepers. Oh, wait, you know what we got here? One, two, three, four. There's potential there. And maybe the one cracks can go since we have no two. So let's use that as a separator. Okay, we have a pair we don't need, the one crack. We'll pass. I'm surprised somebody didn't take it. Okay, now look what we got. We now have a pair of fours. So I would probably build around that and play one, two, three, four. Pong Kong, second hand down in mixed suits, no gaps. Probably I would keep the white dragon for a little while because we could still maybe play one, two dragon. 
third hand down. And then I would probably let the nine go. And then the three next. Okay, so we can't call anything but the two dot. That's a pung if we play that second hand down. Nope. Oh, we don't need wins. <clears throat> okay, if they have a pung of east, they're going to need a west. There's a joker, by the way. Always look at exposures. Oh, a keeper. Oh, now we can calm that. I would give up on that dragon now. And then also, I would discard the riskiest tile, the flower. Okay, the next riskiest tile is the white dragon. Okay, that would be a pun. We're going to pass. Four ban. Well, let's let the dragon go. We're going to ignore. It would be really nice if we could draw that east. Seven, crack. Nope. Nope. That was just, oh, the nine crack is out. Four bam is out. We're good there. We need a keeper. Two crack. Okay, now let's just see. There's one, two, one, two now or one, two, three, four. Either way, we don't need the three dot or the four bam. Now the two crack, that is out right here. Somebody got the joker. Okay, we don't need that. Three bam. We have all one, two, three, four. It's got it, still got to fit a pattern on the card though. Okay, we're good there. Looks like nobody wants flowers. Five dot. No, we have one, two, three, five. That's way too far, too far apart. Ooh, there's a couple jokers up for grabs. Okay, now here we would need to calm, but we're not ready. So we have to ignore it. So we gotta remember we need a joker now. Nine bam, that can go. We can pass and pass. Okay, we need a keeper here. One bam. We don't need that at all. Oh, to our left, we get another turn. Oh, we got skipped. Nope. Okay, we need a keeper. We got a joker. Awesome. We need that for the two. All right, let's discard the two or three dot. Okay, we're good. We don't need a flower. Okay, now the next discards will be the, oops, we need that three. Oh, my goodness. I almost threw that away. Let's use the joker to separate our keepers. So we have one discard and a pair we don't need. We have 55 tiles left. We need to discard this one crack. Maybe the player on our left is playing one, two, one, two. Maybe we'll get a joker. Let's discard it. Look, we got a joker. Oh, nobody wanted it. Another miss for Joker bait. Oh, well. Okay, we need a keeper here. Nine dot, nine dot. I think we're okay here. It's not out, but sevens and eight dot out. Oh, there's, a, there's an exposure. Oh, we got lucky. So they need seven, eight, and dots paired up. We're going to pass. Okay, we can call. We're going to Kong. Oh, I almost clicked Pung. Make sure you click the right button. Okay, let's discard this two crack. Okay, we're going to ignore. Oh, oh, that could be a winning, a winning tile. Wait a minute. Why are they, if they're discarding a West, that means they already have their Pung. Because see, they have a Pung of East. And a Kong of Nines, they need seven, eight paired up. They already have their West. We don't need a North. Okay, we need three crack, four crack, Pung Kong. Uh-oh, why did they throw away a West? Oh, it's because we're playing with, I think we're playing with a beginner. They threw away their a tile they needed. 
That's the second towel they needed. I'm confused now. I don't know what they're doing. Uh oh, flower. It was just discarded. Whoa. Nope. Okay, we need a keeper. Okay, now this this could be risky. Over here to the right, Marjorie. I think they're playing four, five, six, seven. Same hand as us. They might con this. Oh, ho, ho, ho. they're not ready. Okay. We need a keeper. Two bam. That was just thrown, wasn't it? No. One, only one is out. One, two bam. We're going to let that go first. Okay, pass. Wow, that's weird. I wonder why they threw a four. Okay, flower, we don't need that. We still have potential for this hand. We need a keeper. One bam. That is at least as a card because there's a pung over here. Oh my goodness, where are our titles? We got a keeper. Ready to win on a three crack or a four crack. One four. We need. Uh oh, eight crack, eight crack. I don't think anyone needs that. There's only 15 tiles left. We're good. Good. Oh, shoot. They had jokers. They were bluffing. All right. Well, we got ready to win. I'm happy about that. Uh, that was something of a distraction. Yes, it was a bluff. I don't know why a beginner would do a bluff with jokers. But, but anyhow, that's okay. Uh, let's see. Our three was over here under Dottie's hand. And our four was in the wall. So we got ready. Let's play one more game. Okay, hold on. I'm going to do a little cough. All right. We've got a pair of dragons, two jokers. I would keep the other dragon. One, six, eight, nine in bams, two, nine in cracks, three, eight in dots. Okay, so now what could we do here? Dragons. There is a year hand with dragons. Of course, we have a big gap. We have no flowers. We need more twos. Dragons are kind of rough. You know, the other thing I was thinking is maybe we could do something consecutive. So I think I would keep the BAMs. Let's see what happens here. Okay, we have our first multiple, three dot. That's not really helpful though, unless we play one hand, one three dot with five seven in cracks, or I'm sorry, one three in dots with a three five in cracks. Yikes. Well, let's just keep the three. It's a multiple. So let's pass the nine, the six, and the eight. We got a five. We could use these for the three, maybe. All right, let's see about the one three five hand with dragons. One, three in dots, three, five in cracks. We have a gap, no three, but we can use jokers because that's a pun. And then the Kong of dragons. Let's pass four, eight with a dragon. No keepers. Keep going. Let's do eight, nine, two. Okay, we need a three crack in here. Let's keep the one. And the five. Can't keep it all though. That five is not going to be helpful in mixed suits. We do have four or five there. Oh, this is kind of risky. Four, five, six for a pass. I don't think I would do that. Let's keep the four and pass the one. Let's see here. We have a flower. Three dot, four bam, five crack, mixed suit Kongs. Fifth hand down on the right. It could work. Five bam, six, seven, four, five, 
four five five six four five five. I would let that go, and I would probably even let the six go. I would pass fully. We could still do three, four, five Mixu Kongs. Or one, three, three, five, if we can get that three crack. Oh, we got like numbers with twos. I think I would pass two. Keep our options open here. Because we have a gap. We could be playing a gap hand. Oh, we got the four. So now I would focus on those multiples. Use the most of your multiples. Three, four, five. Three, four, five, Mixu Kongs. And we have Joker Gate with the Green Dragon. Okay, now two bam. Well, here's one, two. No, no, no. That's not going to work for us. Okay, let's let the easy. If I'm not using the wins, I let them go. Nope, we're good. Okay, keeper. Nope, south. No wins. Looks like nobody wins wins again. Okay, now here, we are playing a hand with no gaps, so I would call it. If you know what hand you're playing and you have no gaps and you can call a tile, I would do it. So we need, we could even Kong the three. We just need to build our five. All right, so let's hold the, the dragons. See if maybe around when we get to like maybe 55 tiles left. You just want to make sure before 40 tiles left. Anytime before, let's say, 50 tiles, you want to let go of your joker bait, especially if it's not out. Because it would get more and more risky, especially a dragon. No. Okay, we don't need a one. Oh, that was quick. They call super quick. Nope, that's pass. White dragon. We don't need that. We've got a Kong of Fours out. Okay, four dot we don't need. We're good there. Four crack. Well, I suppose I would keep it just in case like numbers comes in as a long shot option. Nah, not good. Nope, we're looking for a three dot five crack. Let's let the two. Really, this four can probably go. We're good there. Four dot, four dot. Okay, well, let's keep it for a minute. We could maybe switch to like numbers with fours. Nope, we're good. We need a pair. Five bam. Let's see here. No, four. Three, four. We need it. If we get a three bam, we could switch to three, four, three, four. So, really, this five bam, it looks good, but it's really not helpful. We're good. Nope. Four bam. Exchange, please. Thank you. All right. Now we're at 67 dials. We have a little time for the jokers or the joker bait. Let's let the four crack go. Oh, there's an exposure with the joker. We want to let this four dot go right away. Maybe they're playing three, four, three, four. Oh, we got our flower. Nice. Okay, now we have joker bait as our only discard. So we're going to have to probably discard that. We're good. We need a five crack or a three dot. Ah, south. Okay, we're at 59 tiles. We're getting to the place where we want to discard this uh, dragon. Oh, there it is. It, someone did it for us. Nobody wanted it. So it's another miss. Hit or miss. We got a keeper. Okay, now let's put these over here. We are ready to calm. We're good there. Oh, we got a joker. Another joker. Nice. All right. We're ready to win on three dot or a five dot, and we're in the middle game. That's Mahjong. Woohoo! Three, four, five. Mr. Kongs. We got it. 
we might be able to play another game. Shall we play one more? We might go over just a little bit. One more game? Okay, one more game. Oh, oh this is going to be, oh, hey, we do have a multiple, a seven. Anytime you just have to start with the predominant pattern. <clears throat> Sorry, hold on. Oops. Okay. Anytime you have no multiples, you focus on the predominant pattern. We have a multiple, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, so with a seven bam, we could maybe do big odds or maybe something consecutive. I would probably keep the wind for a bit and the dragons because we have a lot of discards. Look at all these tiles, six tiles. <laughs> okay, let's do one, four, two. It's equally risky. So we're looking at seven, eight, nine, maybe something in wins with the seven. We got the seven a red and an eight. Oh my goodness. Okay. We have two tiles, really three tiles. Th those can go. We don't have to pick a hand. Let's see here. If we can get five, seven in dots, that would be ideal. We could play big odds. Okay. Now there's seven, nine. At this point, we need to let something go. I think I would let the wind go at this point. We have seven, nine, five, seven, nine. We have eights, seven, eight, nine. I don't know if I would pass one, two. I think I would let, let's see here, dragon. I think I would let the dragon go. Focus on number tiles, seven, eight, nine, streamline. Here's an eight, nine. So we are, we are optimizing and well, all three, we're doing all three again. I would let the, the dragons go at this point. <clears throat> okay, north, two, red, out of here. All right, now here's an eight, nine. So now we have three toss pass, so we still don't have to pick a hand. Three, four, two, three, four. That's that's kind of risky. Okay, so we have seven, nine. There's a gap in there. We have no eight. But we also have eight, nine here and eight, nine here. I think what I would do is do a two, four, and then maybe one of the nines. Let's see here. Eight, nine, seven, nine. All right, let's see what happens. Yuck. Okay, so we have one, three, northeast. We can pass three. Oh, you know what? Maybe we could play one, three, five. Okay, why does it do that? There. We can use this for the missing five. It's a gap. Maybe what we could do, let's see, we have eight, uh, seven, nine, seven, eight, nine. Maybe we could pass two. Just one wind and an eight. I was thinking we could do six, seven, eight, nine if we get a six bam. And then if we get an eight bam, we could do seven, eight, nine, but then we'd need flowers. We're going to be an underdog on this one. What happened? Oh, okay. No keepers at all. So we're an underdog here. We could play one, three, five, seven, nine, and we have Joker bait with the eight crack. In which case we'd have four discards with Joker bait. We're an underdog here because we have more than four discards. But not by far, just a couple of keepers and we'll be okay. We, we really don't want that nine BM. We, we don't, we have a gap, no five BM. I wouldn't call a tile if you, you don't know what hand you're playing yet. You don't know what hand we're playing yet. And I wouldn't call that three because we have a gap, no five. If you are playing a hand, potentially, that has a gap and a tile goes down that you need, 
and you can call it with a joker, don't. Because if you have a gap, you might be able to develop the hand in a different way, but you'll be committed with that exposure for a gap hand. Anytime you're playing a gap hand, wait for exposures if you can. I would ignore that. Okay, we don't need that. Ignore. No, we don't need that. Okay, now that four dot just went down. So did the five crack. I would I would uh, let the four dot go. If we get a, five, a seven crack, maybe we could do five, seven crack, white dragon, seven, nine, bam. We'll see. I'm still kind of hoping we get a six bam. For six, seven, eight, nine, five dot. No, that's not helpful. <clears throat> no, we're good there <clears throat> for now. Eight bam. Okay, now here, seven, eight, nine. Let's let the five crack go. So now we have seven, eight, nine. We may or may not use it. If we get a five bam, I think I would focus on the first odd hand. No. Nope. Okay, flower. I would reassess now because we could maybe do seven, eight, nine flower. Let's let the, the dragon go. Yeah, we're good there. Nope. I think our strongest potential is seven, eight, nine flower, pair of flowers. Nope, we're good there. We don't need dragons. Two bam. We definitely don't need a two bam. Nope. We're looking for probably an eight bam. Four bam. That is not helpful. It looks pretty, but it's not helpful. Let's see here. I'm kind of thinking this nine and the eight are going to need to go pretty soon. We can keep the one three in case we get a five bam. I think our strongest potential is seven, eight, nine Kongs. We can Kong the seven and the nine. Now we have a weakness. We need a pair of flowers. Oh, we definitely don't need that. Okay. We're good there. Now that's the, I wouldn't take that. We have no five BAM. Somebody probably has five BAMs. There's a pair. Okay, now I would definitely let the three bam go. The one three, I would focus on seven, eight, nine, especially because we now have that pair of flowers. We can get one good pick, the eight bam, or the nine bam, because we can use that joker to help us with our eight or nine. Okay, now we're getting towards the lower side of the middle game. We might need to let these eights go pretty soon. Oh, we don't need that. Let's go one more pick, maybe. One or two. We're good there. Okay, now there's a joker up for grabs. We have seven, eight, nine, one suit, Kongs, fifth hand down on the left. Pair of flowers, so we don't need that. Oh, they got it. All right, nine dot is out. One bam was just thrown. Nine crack. We have 52 tiles left. Let's go one more round. That's it. That was a fresh tile. Okay, nobody wants nine dot. So we can hold that for later. Nobody wants the one bam either. Six dot. This, oh, let's let the, let's go one more round. We still have two more picks before the 40 tile minimum or the 40 tile milestone. Let's call it a milestone. Okay, call. We're going to Kong. We have a weakness with our eight, but that's okay. All right, now 45. Let's let this eight crack go and see if we can get an exposure with a joker. There it is. It worked. Joker bait, woohoo! So on our next turn, somebody doesn't win. Oh my gosh, we got skipped. Okay, pass. All right, now we get the Joker. 
Yay. All right, now the one bam. I don't think anybody wants that. Okay. Nope, we're good. We need we need one more good pick. Maybe we'll draw the seven crack or the nine bam. Joker will do. Okay, we're good now. We can con the seven and the eight. Ignore. Oh, somebody got there. Well, we got super close. So I'm happy with that. And it's the top of the hour. All right. I hope you found this session helpful. Let me know what you think about the three techniques. Optimize, maximize, streamline. Just as a reminder, optimizing would be targeting multiples. Maximizing would be using most of your tiles, supporting the multiples or the predominant pattern. Streamlining is when you play in consecutive run. And if you can stack those, you got a power play. If you have any questions about this between now and the next episode, send me an email. You can find my email in the video description below. Evelyn says, good strategy. Thank you. All right. So that's going to do it. And just as a reminder, if you want to try out I Love Mosh, when you register for your account, enter Mosh Life, M-A-H-J-L-I-F-E, in the promo code, and you'll get three weeks for your trial. Thank you, moderators, for being here. I appreciate your support so much. Also, Ellen and Sharon, thank you for becoming a channel member. I really appreciate your support. Big shout out to all my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting Mosh Life. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.